Shining on a cloudy day And it don't matter what you say Cause even if the sky is falling I'ma do it anyway So save your worries, slide your loving I can't feel that good things coming Finally believe that it's gonna be a bright one Trying, forgetting every word that I said in all those old conversations They're turning to a melody I'll be waiting for all them days ahead of me Those words have put me under I'm never coming back again I like my beat with some soul I like my girl with some heart I only love with my home I don't know how to get part I don't know how we gon' finish But I love how we done start So it's taking night to just be who we are so I ain't got the time or the energy Unless it's towards a goal or a memory And to be doing things that I don't really love Only light I have is coming from the sun But now I'm shining on a cloudy day And it don't matter what you say Cause even if the sky is falling I'ma do it anyway So save your worries, slide your loving I can't feel that good things coming it's gonna be a bright one here Every day I got a light one, yeah Never not that it a tight one, yeah No, I keep it a hundred every time I come in trouble No, we coming with the right ones, yeah 35, can't play, get a bag on ya Never wear the dance, put a tag on ya I ain't getting lit, cause my future too bright Tori hit me up, I said that she's on sight No, it's too nice No ops, no lights, no heist That we never hit before, and I'm feeling too right Got a roll like a road on Major difference, it's a platinum and a gold song Whoa, ooh, you already know I can make your life a push start, let's go Say we're off to a good start, let's smoke through the brains of the coop, baby, it's low Shining on a cloudy day And it don't matter what you say Cause even if the sky is falling Education is a gift that no one could take away Philbo Training Center offers brain enhancement students ages 6 and above. We train and help them improve their IQ, EQ, and motor skills. In regards to intelligence quotient, we help children to lead their lessons, especially their academic subjects such as reading, math, and science. We set different programs for students depending on their needs and according to their age group. Like in other children, they learn to develop more their emotional quotient or what we call EQ because it's the time that they can learn how to share things, uh, wait for their turn, just typically being a kid to be uh, nice to their fellow children. And in regards to motor skills, we help it to develop by programs like painting, coloring, and even dancing for the kids. Here in the center, it's not just uh, purely academics. We also let our students to explore. We let them play while learning because we believe here that children learn more when they are happy.
right now for our debate championship 2022. I know you guys are all excited to watch our teams as they fight for the crown to today, tomorrow, tomorrow, today. Sorry for that, guys. I'm just very excited and extremely, I can feel the tension. I can feel the excitement, the mixed emotion of all our um, participants here. And by the way, I will be your host, Maggie, for today's live. Looks familiar? Sounds familiar, right? While you are watching, kindly like and share this video to all our social, social media accounts. We have Facebook, we have Instagram, TikTok, and of course, like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Philbrit Training Center. And also, we have our Philbrit Romania page, our Philbrit International Academy Homeschool page, and of course, all the Philbrit Training Center pages for our Abu Dhabi. Dubai and Ras Al Khaima. I hope you guys are now enjoying and to show support to our participants, kindly show some reactions. You can click the heart button for our government side and for our opposition side, you can click the smile. You can also click all the emotions you like. And again, please, please share this video to all your social media accounts. And of course, now to start off with our debate, I will be sharing with you the debate rules. Let's start off with the debate consists of four teams of two speakers with two teams on either all of our um, debate rules um, for this championship. I hope you guys listen to what I am saying, both teams. And now to formally introduce all our teams, on my right will be the government side. We have Chamuti Rashmi Anthony. You can wave your hand, my dear. Okay, we also have Maria Beatriz Flores for the opening team. And for the opposition side, guys, Show your support. We have Alejandro Marie de Leon. And also we have Naya Isabel Balatas for our opening team. And going back to our um, closing team for our government, we have Jillian Maris Coronado and Maria Sofia Gutierrez. And of course, we have on the other side, Elisha Marie, uh, sorry, Elisha Ray Lapos. Edward might kill me. Sorry for that. Elisha Ray Lapos and Isabel Sofina Lopez. There you have it. You can show your support, guys. Wave your hands. And again, for those who are watching, kindly share and like this video so as we can know about your comments and maybe some greetings and some um, push to our candidates. Now, for before we proceed with our debate proper, I wanted to know how you guys feel for today's competition. May, may we start up with Chamundi. How are you feeling, my dear? You can talk louder here. It's okay. Um, I feel confident and nervous. Wow, confident. How about the opposition side? If the government side is confident, how about you guys? Three words. Lock and loaded. Wow. <laughs> there you have it, guys. That's just a glimpse of what our participants can offer for today's debate. And now I would like to... Um, introduce to you our distinguished adjudicators who will be helping us in grading or giving scores to our candidates.
we want all of you to win, but unfortunately, we need to choose one for today. Don't worry, you all win our hearts, Teacher Jonathan and I. Okay, so again, before we start, for all the reactions, again, I would just like to repeat, for those who just tune in, you can have the heart reaction for our government side, and of course, you can have the smiley reaction for our opposition side. So, again, maybe there are some comments that are coming. I can see a lot of hearts coming now, and I would like to say hello to those who are watching right now. We have at least a lot of viewers, and maybe you can comment who's your bet for today. Maybe you guys now are very excited to know our motion. I would like to um, call in our head teacher, Dr. Mark Evans, to introduce our motion. Good morning, everyone. Really good to see you all here, and I suspect there's a little bit of excitement in the air because this is going to be a very interesting morning. I know that you are going to debate a particular motion. This house believes that people who get good grades at school will do be more successful in life. Hmm, what do I think about that? Well, I'd like to know a little bit more. I wonder what good grades means. Does that mean top grades or does it mean okay grades? And what does successful in life mean? Because there's lots of people who don't have very high paid jobs, but they're very happy. Mm, I think there's lots of things to argue about here, lots of things on both sides. I very much hope that you will be able to sort this out for me. And in actual fact, because um, I'm teaching in another class, there's no way I can be here, which is a real shame. And I'm very, very sorry for that. But what's lucky is that I have worked out a way of being in two places at one time. So I'm going to go to the lesson that I'm teaching in the other room, but I'm going to stay here. Okay, so good luck this morning. I hope the best side wins and I'll be really interested to find out what you've been talking about later. Bye. There you have it, guys, our motion for today's debate. And remember, Doc Mark are watching. about this comment and I'm really excited to introduce all our participants who will be giving their speeches for today's debate. Maybe we can start. Are you all excited? Are you excited? I cannot hear anything. Who's excited for this debate? Okay, so there you have it. Let's start with our government side. Again, our motion is for those who just tune in. This house believes that people who get good grades in school will be more successful in life. Now, to defend the government side, I want to call in the Prime Minister, none other than Chowdhury Anthony. Good grades are life's way of showing you that you have a bright future in store with you. A very good morning. To the jury and my fellow opponents, I'm Chandani Anthony, the Prime Minister of my team, here to support this motion. This house believes that students who get good grades are successful in life. Before beginning my speech, I will give a small introduction to what grades are. Every time you finish an assignment, your instructor will put a letter on top of it. That letter tells you how well or poor you did in the assignment. From A to F, you go from great to well, not so great. But they also have a percentage behind them, and that percentage typically shows how many of the questions you got right or how many requirements you met during the course. For instance, A is the highest and it's between 90 to 100 percent, B is between 80 to 89 percent, C is between 70 to 79 percent, D is between 59 to 69 percent, F, well, this is a failing grade, no wait, don't cry, you just need to work hard. Now, I will begin my first point the importance of good grades. What will happen if you get superior grades? Are these grades going to help you? The answer is obviously yes. 
I have heard many people saying grades don't matter and also a single sheet of paper cannot decide your future. Make sure you score maximum grades before saying this. You all know about Albert Einstein, right? And you know that he didn't do well in school, and skipping classes and many more. But what we don't know is he excelled in math and science. Even though he skipped classes, he had to cram up for exams. Grades do matter, and good grades will lead us to first-class universities, first-class colleges, and job applications, which conclude your future success. Still not convinced about the great role that grades play in determining your success? Here are a few reasons why good grades are important. Better opportunities are always, to re always ready to knock on your door. Talking about school life, I don't know about others, but my old school were in such a way where students who study hard, who score better grades, are always provided with different scholarships, rewards in terms of compliments, and they get a chance to go on educational trips so that they always stay motivated and do better in academics. Teachers too, directly or indirectly, tend to focus more on the studious kids and personally tell them about their opportunities. In our educational system, success is often measured by grades. Grades are important at every step from getting admission to call good colleges or universities to getting a decent job for succeeding. Better colleges are ready to welcome you. Ever thought of getting admission to one of the world's best universities? Better grades grant admission to a reputed academic college, and academic success at the finest universities, and universities leads to higher paying jobs that will fulfill yours as well as your family's needs, including high bank balance, social status, a big house, exotic vacations, and many more. Especially if you wish to pursue your high pro professional courses such as low brain engineering, veterinary studies, etc. Even greater significance is placed on your grades. Your GPA score is of utmost importance of, for your admission to your own colleges. Better grades cause no stress. If you get better grades in your examinations, will there be any other kind of stress? Well, according to me, no. On the other hand, it feels so good to see my parents being proud of me. And it feels so wonderful to see your friends and parents compare their child with you, to you in the parent-teacher meeting. Good grades boost your confidence. Teens sometimes are afraid to try hard because they're afraid of failure. And, they, and hence they give up and never try. What's there to be afraid of? Always remember one thing. You try, you fail. Congratulations, some people don't even try. Just give your best and you will see the results and you will start, and that, will, that will surely motivate you to perform better the next time to keep, you, uh, to keep up your good work. It will bring confidence in you and you will be able to take up more challenges in your academics. If you're dreaming to work in one of the MNCs out there, your GPA scores of, in your resume will be your biggest factor for getting selected. As, a, as employers there are looking for students who can quietly follow their directions and deliver exactly what's expected from them. On the other hand, the criteria of enlisting candidates in the Indian companies in, include a child's non cognitive skills, such as problem-solving skills, leadership qualities, and communication. Uh, of course, grades matter, but that's not the only factor that will decide your selection. Okay, let's leave that and think about the present. Don't you have your dreams of owning a Mercedes, residing in a bungalow with a swimming pool, wearing custom-made suits and expensive watches? Just thinking about them, you, you smile brightly. But the next moment, you, your smile disappears, thinking that you can't probably achieve it. You can, but for that, you need to make preparation from now on. You have to study well and give your everything academic, in the academics, and make sure that you have to achieve all those dreams that you have dreamt as a child. Studying is only for a limited period, but what you're going to enjoy will be a lifetime enjoyment. So why not sacrifice a bit more for a comfortable future? Now moving to my next point. Can college grades predict future success? Earning a good grade is not only a measure of sub subject matter knowledge or intelligence. Instead, it's a composite of knowledge, skills, and personnel traits. For example, a student with good work ethic and his discipline could help their grades because they turn in homework assignments in time and have good attendance. Similarly, the student who is driven would be willing to do additional research for assignments or seek out learning resources if they were struggling. Because grades are a composite measurement of uh, study performance, student performance, they can be a better predictor of success other than a narrow measurement such as IQ. A research paper co-authored by Nobel Prize winning economist J James Heckman found that personality is the most important predictor of success. And grades capture these personality traits. Personality traits like perseverance, diligence, and self-discipline, three helpful traits that can lead to success. On the other hand, IQ alone only accounts for one to two percent of income difference. The harder you work for something, the greater you feel when you achieve it. With all my powerful arguments, I'm proud to propose the motion, and I ask you to do the same. Thank you.
there you have it guys for our government side according to our prime minister one of her arguments is good grades matter so i would like to hear from the leader of opposition how well he prepared for his arguments let's call in our hand from marie de leon Good morning, everyone. My name is Alejandro, and I will be your leader, leader of opposition in this afternoon. Uh, raise your hand if you wish to ask a POI, and if North consider your POI rejected. Honorable Chair and panelists, though the government wishes to suggest otherwise, we here as opposition do not believe that people who get good grades in school will be more successful in life. Though we agree that knowledge and achievements gained through academic studies and validation will give some opportunities to some individuals um, this is not guarantee a successful life for the individual. We also have to consider other factors of being a successful individual, such as work ethics, character, and all in all people skills, and which are not taught in depth in today's frontestary. Now moving on, here in opposition, our goal for this debate is to destroy the myth that good grades equal a successful life and, allowing, and allow students to be challenged and grow from their mistakes and be given more chances to reinvent themselves. Our burden is to prove why the notion of good, great equals a successful life is false, why there needs to be a discussion of the bigger issue of an outdated and flawed education system, and why there needs to be such reform in such said system, and how this will benefit, benefit the stakeholders. Now moving on to my rebuttals. Government argued that good grades grant great opportunities for the future that can lead them to a successful life. We think they may be given entrance to colleges and given opportunities to better their life, but a high GPA is not the only indicator of success. But if you look at the status quo, or 21st century, being a creative thinker, an innovator, or an entrepreneur is what, you can, what can grant you success in the future. And this goes without saying that the grading system is too flawed to measure an individual's creative integrity. By this I mean to which extent they may utilize their knowledge to create unique ideas. The government also stated that good grades can lead to scholarships. Now, let's say an individual has an opportunity to study at a prestigious college or university, but do they actually know what they're in for? College is useless for students who do not understand the value of education, but only the value of marks. And when they are put in a master or doctoral level, they are pushed to think and be creative. And as I mentioned earlier, Earth grades do not assure an individual has the ability of intellectual property and creative integrity. Now before I move on, I'd like to assign most of my arguments. My first argument will be that the grading system undermines the work of students. And then before I move on to my second argument, I'll be taking POIs. After which my second argument will be that the system is absurd and is a fabulous metric system in which I will expound on later. Now moving on to my first argument. The grading system undermines the work of students. In today's society, we clearly see multiple individuals that function and give importance to society and are more or less very successful in today's time. And a lot of them in no way performed well or were just merely held back academically. This is why we believe the grading system undermines the work of students. Research suggests that grades have never acted as a motivational aspect for students to excel academically. An opposition argues that grading incentivizes individuals to pursue above average grades at the expense of actual meaningful learning. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean that students are taught to acquire information and bring it back on command without actual comprehension of the matter. Because the grading system under, undermines the work of students, this is one of the many reasons as to why good grades do not equal a successful future. And therefore, it's one of the many reasons why we at opposition do not believe that people who get good grades in school will be more successful in life. Now, I'd like to take time uh, to accept some POIs you have. Okay? Uh, in the near and future years, people who are successful in school or academic grades, how do you describe their lifestyle uh -huh. later on? Do you think they'll be privileged enough with their current life stability? Uh, do you think a grade can, uh, uh, you know, measure that type of skill? I can agree. Exactly. Uh, as a segue for my previous argument, my second argument will be the current curriculum is not suitable for measuring a person's work or skill. As stated before, the modern education are only created to pour in facts into the minds of youth. Students are essentially vessels of information without any ability to actually internalize such information. The problem with the system of assessment that utilizes grades is that they are way often 
uh, heavy and are more compar comparison compared to description. We have to believe in the fact that a mere number or letter cannot carry the complexities of the process that is meant to summarize, or to put it simply, grades are inaccurate because some outcomes and predictions cannot be expressed enough through a fatuous metric system. This is why our counterproposal as opposition is to bring and create a reform in the modern education system. As we can see with the flaws presented above, today's system is incredibly outdated and needs an update. We propose that there should be a piece of conversation about actually adding an extra layer, an extra dimension, uh, to teach them how to actually internalize that and apply their lessons in their daily lives, instead of turning them into vessels of knowledge. For knowledge is not what makes one successful, but knowing how to apply knowledge is what's important. And because the system is so flawed and defective, the opposition have reason to assume that we cannot accurately measure an individual's skill, level of understanding, and quote unquote successfulness using the, this grading system, supporting our argument that such reforms are a necessity to improve the study of methodology. Now, what did I do in this debate? I destroyed the Prime Minister's points, I proved the golden burden, and have very well presented opposition's case and counter proposal. And for all these reasons and more, I am proud to propose. There you have it, an amazing argument. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, respected chairperson, members of the jury, and moderator opponents. My name is Maria Beatriz Flores. Today, I, the Deputy Prime Minister, stood before you to express my views in favor of the motion and state reasons this House believes that great academic, great academic grades can lead to a greater future. Each year, millions of students ask why it matters if they get an A or C in calculus class. Still, students work hard to complete their requirements in the best way possible. It's been drilled to all the students' heads. Doing well in school is important for future success. But how is this true? Are good grades statistically shown to precede career success, high earnings, and entrepreneurial leadership? Although the opposition side was able to give a brief explanation of what they believe this is done, with that they implied um, academic validation and success is only a concept created for a successful life, work ethics, and students' marks. Um, marks are only the value for colleges. Grading leads to a below average, and they are heavy. The problem is solely on grading system, assuming that in, an individual, an individual ability is blinding due to the current grading system. As to that, I oppose. We believe that grades are not necessarily an indicator of someone's intelligence. However, they are measured of overall academic performance, and hence, it is important for a student to achieve standards of excellence. Higher grades and standardized tests is also a measurement of which college or universities will grant admissions to students. They need to do away with their grades, teachers, educators, parents, as well as students need to understand the importance of this academic measurement. The level of a below average student is growing. They get picked on by teachers, parents look down at them, and neighbors constantly judge their actions. They become subject to local gossip as well as overlooked in social settings. Be it a family auction, be, uh, be it a family function or annual school meetups or any other gatherings. Although school, although students don't care as much as at a younger age, all these events unwillingly impact how they view their childhood. They resort to their circle of friends for acceptance and acknowledgement, and they slowly yeah. attach themselves. They resort to their circle of friends and acceptance and acknowledgement. They slowly detach themselves for their expectation and families and teachers. Grades force them to put themselves in a mentally straining position that has a negative impact on their physical and mental health in order to get a good grade. However, while there, this may be a toxic thing, a, pure, a person's future does rely on their high school grades to a certain extent. In an article published by the Washington Post titled, Here's How Much High School Grades Predict Your Future Salary, they included information based off of a sort published in the Eastern Economical Journal by researchers from the University of Miami. The article discussed the importance of a person's of a high school of a high school's GPA from the from a high school GPA of their future earnings. The piece explained how a person's GPA of high school connects their chances of getting into college or that they will finish college, and how much more most likely they'll earn in life. 
Michael T. French, Director of Health Economics Research Group, says that 1 point GPA increases have a 12% increase in men's average annual earnings and 14% increase, increase in women. These reinforces the idea that your future is determined based on your performance and efforts between the ages of 14 and 18. While a high school GPA is not solely a sole contributor to your future earnings, the data shows how a better GPA, uh, a better GPA increases your future earnings by a significant amount. You In are, addition to receiving this, okay, you argue that uh, grades uh, is an accurate measurement of one skill, but um, why is it that a few uh, many students argue that uh, a few mistakes can be, uh, you know? very unfair because it comes with major uh, mistakes, major consequences like uh, uh, limited opportunities and uh, difficult, diff difficulties for employment in the future. Can you really ask a question? A person is more likely to get accepted into a good college which is appealing to their future employees as they are more likely to know to know about colleges and its program. And may even based off an internship that was completed during your college course. Such as, such as these large amounts of pressure on young teenagers as a GPA provided for colleges of accepted high school students continue rises, making it harder for students to get accepted. Despite the limitations of our academic success and predict career success, grades, grades maintain a key factor for students' trajectory after college. Notably, Early career struggles have long-term impact on career trajectory. Students who graduate during recession can struggle to make free of underemployment and have lower earnings for about a decade after entering the workforce. Students who are in good grades in college don't face the same downward pressure as those who are straight by. So stop students may have their luck off when settling at a path to career success. There's a common belief amongst high school students that they need to study hard to attempt high earnings, high grades, because employment and targeting graduates with outstanding academic records. However, this idea does not seem to capture what is actually happening in organizations. As firms value more aspect related with the personality and other personal qualities of young graduates. This underscores the focus that good GPA should be limited to college. High school students with good grades should be accepted to more competitive college and could potentially see related income boosts. Earning a good grade is not only a measurement of a subject knowledge or intelligence, instead it's a composite of knowledge, skills, and personality traits. We have to remember that grades are not the only means for measuring performance in school. The fact, the fact that many universities, the fact that many universities and college have cutoffs and the only students who have achieved minimum score or grade can apply. A student who has a well balanced in their academic skills, arts, and other activities will come across as a well-rounded individual with varied interests and talents. This also boosts a student's chance to get to see of their university of choice for a career of their dreams. Your grades can help you for your future. In fact, you can use your GPA along with your GPS to determine where you are and where you are going. The more you need to know about your strength and opportunities for improvement, the better you'll know where you need to apply to yourself.
There you have it, guys. Our Deputy Prime Minister, Maria Beatriz Flores. Now, may we call in our Deputy Leader of Opposition, Naya Isabel Alatas. Good morning, everyone. My name is Naya, and I will be the Deputy Leader of Opposition for this debate. Again, few few ways to raise hands and uh, said voice only. If ignored, consider it respectfully, respectfully rejected. The government claims that earning good grades means one, one's confidence while, while also motivating a student to do better and creates numerous opportunities for the individual to be more successful in life. This house believes that these points are detrimental to students, which I will probably expound on later in my rebuttal. But before that, the opposition does not believe that studying and aiming for higher grades is, is insignificant but believes that there are substantially more factors that determine success than obtaining exceptional grades and ultimately comes down to, to, to what the word success means to the individual. I will be starting the rebuttal in 3, 2, 1. The government argues that getting good grades or achieving high academic performance boosts the confidence of students leading to more academic achievement, which in turn can aid them in the future. However, they should not depend on achieving high marks as a way of self-assurance, since this can lead to students tying their self-worth to their grades, which is unhealthy, without a doubt a bad habit, and leads to a false sense of superiority. A study in 2002 at the University of Michigan Institute for Social results show that students who base their self-esteem on grades are more likely to fall victim to depression and anxiety, as well as other mental health issues. The government also claims that achieving good grades will open many opportunities in forms such as colleges, scholarships, and jobs. To add on to this argument, students who have received bad grades and have been unmotivated or have given up due to the lack of opportunities for them to try again and the false and potential schools that good grades alone will help to succeed. Research that dates back to 1950 by the Amherst College reported that college grades are a poor predictor of later success since his results showed that students who got average or below average grades frequently rose to the top in businesses and other professions. This proves that it's, it still does not guarantee success. Before anything else, I will sign both my arguments ahead. Number one, neg the negative effects of the of the good grades equals successful life mentality. Number two, success in life is not limited to career or wealth. First, I would like to encapsulate the leader of opposition's argument. The current grading system does not fully grasp, grasp the full capabilities and skills of the individual as a result of a, rare, of a flawed way of educating students. Instead of them understanding information, they memorize it instead. Due to the in, in, inadequacy of the education system, this is enough reason on why there should be a discussion on a reform to this old-fashioned way of teaching in a way which will benefit everyone. Because with such a flawed system, how can you measure success? Moving on to my argument, the concept of good grades equals successful life being ingrained in students does more harm than good. It builds up pressure and stress on students which impacts their mental health. The immense expectations by society on, on students and the zealous goals set by students themselves by, by the virtue of good grades equal successful life can overwork the individual and may result in them losing their work studies and do well on their academics. It would already be bad enough if they didn't want to study to study this certain course but got forced by their parents or peers' expectations. This idea of good grades equals successful life promotes unhealthy competition instead of cooperation, which in turn can make studying competitive and unenjoyable instead of something fun. Research has established that academic pressure, which also interwines with academic stress, results in depression, increase in, increase in anxiety, and poorer physical, social, and mental health. This affects... Um, with that grade mentioned, what is what is the average percentage of people who were able to get a well-paying job and provide for themselves 
or support others despite these limitations, is it really the school, schooling system to blame for a person's responsibility? Uh, is there anything to question? Okay. <clears throat> the last grade session, what is the average percentage of people who were able to get a well-maintained job and provide for themselves or support others despite these limitations? Is it really the schooling system to blame for a person's responsibility?
greater future by providing right evidence to enhance by team science. Let's mention Albert Einstein's and his accomplishments. After he dropped out of school, did you did you know he, he did you know he enrolled himself at a Swiss schooling or out and graduated with a stellar grade? To get to my point, maintaining good grades throughout one's academic period is a sign of responsibility. And achieving this result means they've done best, level best as a student. One might say there were words of sincerity and de dedication. As stated by Bea, Michael T. French, the director of the economics research group, has revealed that one point GPA, GPA increase has a 12% inflation in best average annual in earnings and 14% upsurge for women. And from Chambi, better grades grant admissions in a reputed academic college and academic success at the finest university, universities leads to a high paying job that will fulfill your as well as your family's needs, inclu including high bank balance, stat social status, a big house, salt applications, and many more. Keep this in mind for the point I will be presenting. How will someone who's coming from a poor background and is still struggling with poverty turn their, their life for the better? Education. There's multiple ways you can be enrolled without worrying about paying, and one of them is by scholarships. When the majority of scholarships are for high school, college, and graduate students, there's actually plenty of open applications that are more than willing to include middle school students. Middle, middle school students, students in the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Another notable, notable one is by sponsorship, and to elaborate on what edu education sponsorship means, a sponsored student is someone whose tuition and fees are being paid in whole or in part by a business or an agency. Study this class if you want to enjoy the future. With this, I move on to my next point. People like Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and Mark Zuckerberg, and so on, had the privilege to succeed. There's a pattern, and if you haven't noticed, they mostly consist of white men. If a child of color with failing grades decides they want to drop out to pursue something else, do you think they'll receive the same amount of support as a pri privileged white child would? As harsh as it, is, as it is, the answer is no. Parents of color understand that we, as their child, need to excel our, our studies in order to make it big in the white dominant, dominated spaces in the world. This is why I support the question if a child needs good grades to have a successful life. It's a, Rejected. It's important to remember that dropout drop billionaires are the exceptions, not the rules. There's thousands of highly su successful people who refine their ta talents at college that would say they wouldn't be where they are today without, without the knowledge and network they've been within their academic grades. Well, what about the people who flunked school got, and got bad jobs as a result? According to the, to the statistics, in Bay Area, a 50% increase in failing grades has, has been reported, as well as 79% of students failing at least one class in New Mexico. Those students are already setting the stone for their future. For example, 90% of said users' company no, companies' note sharing platforms are, see a one-letter grade increase, according to its company's findings. One, one, one potential cause? Students who are seeking out learning resources are demonstrating academic grade, a solid pred prediction of rejected. Just success. There's already a staggering amount of educators leaving their profession and study despite all their efforts to let the students' potential do, they still flunk. On to the next point, the population is dying from multiple things and one, one such is just those people who fall short from the right future due to their academic failure. What will be the new ge generation of doctors and paramedics? What of future authority authorities? Teachers, firefighters? Would you trust a doctor with bad grades that would have them put into their degree and license? Picture yourself as a parent. What if, continuously, your child keeps bringing home failing grades? That even their teachers have fallen, saying your child might be a grade. Would you believe that they'll have a success successful adult life? Would you be realistic or idealistic? Do not let what you cannot do with do, do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. So to the students out there who can who can do more but than that, I have one question for you. What is stopping you from being the better version of yourself now? A fan a fan of self-reflection is something one must take every once in a while. Uh, can you please uh, clarify your recent argument and how it's relevant and uh, supports your uh, what's your motion? Which argument? 
superior kids participate. For all these reasons and more, I am proud to be one. Okay, there you have it, our member of the opposition. We are reaching to our final two um, speakers who will be giving their arguments. First one, let's call in the government whip, Maria Sofia Gutierrez, to have her arguments. Good afternoon to our teachers, the jury, and my fellow class. My name is Maria Sophia Gutierrez, and I stand before you all as the government whip to present my views about the motion you strongly support. This house believes that a great academic grade can lead to a greater future. As we're coming to the end of the debate, though the opposition team was able to give reasons on why they believe in what they believe in, I assure you the set of statements and solid, and solid reasons from my fellow members that our motion just really stands, and with the amount of passion you have supporting what you believe in, we know you should too. I'd like to bring back the statements of my team. Quoting from, my, from our Prime Minister's statement, the harder you work for something, the greater you will feel when you achieve it. At the end of the day, it always relies on the responsibility of the student. What you give, is a, what you give in is what you get. Again, quoting from our Deputy Prime Minister's statement, your grades can help you plan for your future. In fact, you can use your GPA a lot like your GPA to determine where you are and where you're, go you're, where you're going. <clears throat> The more you know about your strengths and opportunities for improvement, the better you, you know where you apply yourself more. Your work ethic and the skills you develop as you strive for, to maintain your GPA will serve you in your career. Think critically, manage your time and your expectations, but most of all, listen to your feedback and be resourceful. Also mentioned by a government member, Maintaining good grades throughout one's academic period is a sign of responsibility and achieving these results means they've done, like, done best level as a student. One might say their rewards are sincerity and dedication. According to the Wadim's Law, all children must be provided with appropriate living standards, access to health services, education, equal opportunities and essential services, and facilities without any kind of discrimination. Also mentioned by Article 28 of the UN Convention of the Rights of the Child State, children have the right to an education. Discipline in schools should respect children's human dignity. Primary education should be free. No matter how much privilege you have, how much money your parents get, and what class you think your life is, that doesn't mean education is far from you. Think of the less privilege who need a diploma or some sort of proof of competition, completion that they finished school in order to get good job opportunities that would give them a stable life in the future. Education is important. It's your ticket to an easier way of living. Students who get good grades in high school have high chances of receiving scholarships, which are very useful, especially when you're less privileged. When you work hard, you get rewarded. You get rewarded. Think of the parents who work hard in order to provide a good form of education to their children. They do that because they know themselves that you can get easier access to jobs when you've got a good record of splitting grades. Getting good grades means you're a good student. Therefore, your career is definitely one of responsible employee, which means you're more open and wanted in terms of getting future stability. That's why we, the government, has been providing public schools which are free of charge to children around the world, especially in places where education materials are lacking. We do this because we strongly agree that good grades and good, great academic achievement is a shortcut to success. We, with us providing free schools to children, this would lower the stakes of many unemployed people because they never got good academic background. Again, no matter where you're from, you will never have no access to education. I'll end the government side by saying that no matter what, we'll stand up what we believe, especially because of the number of the less privileged children around the world whose wish is to read a book, learn English, be doctors in the future, be teachers in this. Every child has the right to get a good form of education. Education will always be open for everyone because we believe that if you strive for good academic grades, it will lead to a greater future. Thank you. Thank you, government whip. And now for our final um, speaker, we have the we will have the arguments for our opposition whip, Isabel Sofina Lopez. Way taller than me. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, honorable chair and panel. I am Isabel, today's opposition whip, and I am to present why we, as the opposition, believe why good grades do not always lead to a successful life. <laughs> now comparing both sides of the house, you should be able to see that the opposition clearly takes the debate. Before I proceed to the clashes of this debate, I would like to add a few rebuttals that came up or have been implied by the government. 
Academic performances lead to future success. As the government believes getting good grades will grant you to admissions to the best universities or such, although this may be true, we do agree with an obvious fact that we, as the opposition, believe that what one person does after their school years, that's what's going to ensure their step to success. Second, good grades equals good students. Now what does that make the students with average grades? The opposition stands for the fact that these students with average grades are more likely to be successful due to their potential. In the hands of governments, they em emphasize on good grades, supposedly to motivate students and push them to their supposed potential. But along the lines of our leader opposition, research suggests that grades never act in the as motivational aspect, and expounded by our deputy leader, that good grades will lead to certain successful life, despite the motivation given, rather gives competition instead of cooperation within students. The government has clearly emphasized the importance of good grades will lead you to this ideal university and or college, then will lead to a successful career in life. However, what the government does not see is that grades do not always have recourse to this successful ideal life. Note my words on successful life. Is that not what we're focusing on right now? We, the opposition, are completely convinced that success does not only come through with good grades, but rather it is how one portrays itself to the world, the way they think critically and their skills. Let's think through the saying, good grades lead to a successful life. We all know, especially by the government, parents and some teachers would use this saying to motivate their children and or students to do well in school. We want to show why this is not always the case. Once again, the main goal of the opposition is to destroy the myth, to prove why we stand for the fact that good grades do not always resort to a successful life. We can give over how many examples of A-list celebrities, people you look up to, politicians as well, who did not do well in school or at least had average grades. They seem to be successful, don't they? What we define as success is based on the potential of a person, their skills, and their relationships. Academics are just one of the factors. Please note that we are not promoting the lack of priority in studies and academics, but rather what we wanted to come across from this is that there are other factors leading to success, rather what we believe or define success as. Now what did I contribute in this debate? I destroyed the government's points, highlighted the most important points in the government, and why why, why all of oppositions don't hold up in comparison. Prove to you why we are the only team that properly addresses and effectively solves the main issue of the debate. For all these reasons and more, I am proud to oppose. Thank you. There you have it, guys. All the arguments set and given by both our government and our opposition team. And to conclude and to give their final arguments, I would like to call in first our leader of opposition, Alejandro Marie de Leon. Honorable Chair and panel, comparing both sides of the House, you should be able to easily recognize that opposition clearly takes the win in this debate. Now, why do I stand so firmly with the statement that opposition should win? Well, if you pick opposition, our policies and plans will better, prominence will better. Um, to better our society. Why? Well, we proved that the myth that good grades equals a successful future is borderline false, and we vocalize the fact that students should be allowed to be challenged and grow from their mistakes and be given more chances to better themselves. We also presented a solution, more specifically reforms, if implemented, will introduce a new dimension to the education system where students are encouraged to learn and grow instead of a system that punishes them after making a few mistakes with major consequences, such as limited opportunities and difficulties in future employment. We have also presented in our arguments that we are able to protect students and we are able to help them excel, and no government says or argue that they'll protect their students in their policy. Our policy, our policy shows that we are able to do this faster, more efficient, and we'll even have extra benefits for these students on the side. And without a doubt, we will be even more successful. Now, going back, our deputy leader of opposition also presented some major arguments in this debate. She showed us 
how the same good grades equals to a successful life can be very damaging can be very damaging for students' health because it acts as a burden for these students and promotes competition rather than collaboration. Now, what did the government do to lose this debate? May, they mainly argued that good grades are opportunities to give good opportunities, but totally discarded the fact that grading system does not prove what successfulness uh, and does not prove whether um, whether they may be able to handle a higher education or follow up with success of their chosen of their chosen career. They stated that every child has the right to education, but what matters the most is what they may do with it. And they clearly failed to prove otherwise and rebut. Meanwhile, on our side, the opposition group has proven to you exactly how our policy conserves society and in general better the human race for what is or is not to become our future. Now what did I do in this short recap? I showed you that the opposition side is clearly at large in this debate and proved that our case was better and would provide better circumstances for the current status quo and demonstrated why and how the government unquestionably falls short in this round. For all these reasons and more, I'm more than proud of the proposal. Okay, the conclusion given by our leader of the opposition and now we will have our Prime Minister to have the conclusion made by the government. Let's welcome Shabudi Rashmika Anthony. Me and my team believe that people who get good grades, uh, are good grades are successful in life, has been provided in our goggles and speeches. The amount of people who went homeless or suffering financially due to bad grades. We also stated the importance of good grades and including the importance of college grades to have a successful future. We also gave you efficient evidence. We gave you the purpose of the motion and also has a solution. You can motivate the students and help them whenever they need it. And if there's a problem of the poor not being able to study, the government can provide free schooling, such as public schools. So if you're from a lower class, you can have opportunities to do better. Also because good grades will give out more job opportunities. Um, me mental health issues limit, but don't stop creating substance. You, me you mentioned after school, after school schooling creates, uh, with your recalling problems, should the flunking school system, people you mentioned, how are you sure the next failing student is going to become a CEO millionaire? From the average population, not everyone has the opportunity to try them out. And in conclusion, the grades do matter and they are important to students' successful future. With all my and my team's powerful arguments and the solution we provided, we strongly propose the motion and we ask you to do the same. Thank you. There you have it guys, we've been hearing all the arguments, all the sides made with the government or our opposition and again for those who are still watching, we still have time to please our adjudicators and let them decide who will win for today's debate. So I would just like to read some comments online they're all waiting for it actually i've been just to share i've been learning a lot of words from today because there are a lot of abbreviations that are on our comment section and i don't know about it makes me feel old okay so um one comment is is that how you pronounce it sheesh <laughs> chino is doing it according to a adriel mandala and then there are some other comments all like for real for real right <laughs> for real, for real. F -R -F -R. so also um our ceo commented miss mayak who's watching right now hello miss amazing students and again congratulations to all our amazing students who well then finished their arguments for today's debate again we're all really really proud of you guys and if we can just let all of you win for today we will do but according to our adjudicators, we need to choose only one. <laughs> okay, so for the meantime, while we are tabulating our scores, we are going to have a break for now. And stay tuned in, guys. We will be back.
Shining on a cloudy day And it don't matter what you say Cause even if the sky is falling I'ma do it anyway So save your worries, slide your loving I can't feel that good things coming Finally believe that it's gonna be a bright one here Trying, forgetting every word that I said in all those old conversations and Turn into a melody I'll be waiting for all the days ahead of me Those words that put me under are never coming back again I like my beat with some soul I like my girl with some heart I only love with my whole I don't know how to get part I don't know how we gon' finish But I love how we done start So it's taking night to just be who we are so I ain't got the time or the energy Unless it's towards a goal or a memory And to be doing things that I don't really love Only light I have is coming from the sun But now I'm shining on a cloudy day And it don't matter what you say Cause even if the sky is falling I'ma do it anyway So save your worries, slide your loving I can't feel that good things coming finally it's gonna be a bright one here Every day I got a light one, yeah Never not that it a tight one, yeah No, I keep it a hundred every time I come in trouble No, we coming with the right ones, yeah 35, can't play, get a bag on ya Never with the days, put a tag on ya I ain't getting lit, cause my future too bright Tori hit me up, I said that she's on site No, it's too nice No ops, no lights, new heights That we never hit before, and I'm feeling too right Got a roll like a road on Major difference, it's a platinum and a gold song Whoa, ooh, you already know I can make your life a push start, let's go Say we're off to a good start, let's smoke through the brains of the poop, baby, it's blowing Shining on a cloudy day And it don't matter what you say Cause even if the sky is falling I'ma do it anyway So say your worries, slide your loving I can't feel that good things coming Finally believe that it's gonna be a bright one
back live on our debate championship 2022. I know guys you have been you are waiting for this time to happen. You wanted to know who is the winner of our today's debate. But before that, we would like to hear some comments, critiques from our adjudicators. Let's start off with our academic advisor, Ms. Harriet. Hi, Miss. You can start with your comment. Firstly, thank you so much. Um, it was really lovely to spend. Um, my morning listening to all your comments, you've clearly done so much research um, and are really passionate about um, the topic and about debating. It's really, really lovely to see um, young people um, looking, doing some wider research, doing some information about a, co a topic that's really interesting um, and what is success. And I think you made a lot of points about lots of different people Um who have been really successful and in different ways of their lifestyle. So it's really, really great to see that you're um, looking up to different people that you've seen in the media, seen in the um, in celebrity in the celebrity world, and and seen how they've done and what they've done with their lives. It's really, really interesting and really, really great to see. So thank you so much. Um, such a difficult decision. I actually put my scores in as we were going through, and and then. Um, changed some and I think you worked you really started to settle in and really started to get involved which is really great um, and I know you've worked, all worked really really hard and had um, lots of different of other arguments so you've had lots of experience and you can really see that come through in um, in your arguments and in your um, talking um, I think the government team have done so much. There's so much information. I can see your brains thinking so quickly. What can I get down? What do I need to say? Um, almost too much information that sometimes it became a little bit muddled um, and you were speaking a little bit too quickly. Um, but that's because you've got so much that you want to give. But as a point, as a way forward... Um, think about how you can present that information in a little bit of a, a different way. But there was so much information. I was so um, pleased with all of the arguments. Where did I um, write down? Let me just pick out a few of the things. Um, using um, the rights of the child, bringing that in, and the impacts of grades on people of colour, really, really great. Um, and other... Um, capturing your grades capturing your personality and focusing on future opportunities I thought that was really great um so thank you so much from the government side and um, for the opposition side again some really really key um key themes really um strong um steady arguments I think you were very good at putting your arguments this is what I'm going to say this is how I'm going to say it and this is um what I'm going to say again, which is a really, really nice way just to lead the, the listener through um, the argument and giving a really good, um, clear tone of voice, asking those rhetorical questions about and then answering the questions of the other team, which I really, really liked. Um, so your tone and your passion really came through in your steady um, presentation and communication of your really convincing comments. Um, I think I really liked your importance of mental health issues when you looked at um, bringing in mental health issues as well and your structure of your argument was so good. Um, I will not say my winner um, because I think it will come up on the score um, board, but it was so lovely um, to be part of this. Thank you so much. And... Yeah, it was really difficult. I actually sent a message to both the two, Miss um, Laura and Sir Raymond, that this is so difficult. It's all so good. So well done, everyone. And I think um, you've worked so hard. So thank you. 
Thank you so much, Ms. Harriet, for all your challenging um, critiques and challenging um, comments given to all our teams. And now let's call in Teacher Ray, who's learned from Ras Al as always, to give his comments. No, no. Teacher Ray, you can give your comments now. Hi, Miss Maggie. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having us today. Um, to help you guys check who will be the best team from the two teams. Actually, both the teams are really good. Miss Harriet and I were just discussing that we're going to have a very difficult time in um, selecting the best one. You made really good points as well. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate the both of you, your your teachers and your parents for the great support. You've been amazing. Um, I would like to give some specific comments on both the teams. Firstly, on the prime, the prime minister and the opposition leader of opposition, and the prime minister's side. Um, the speaker might have been too time conscious in the beginning that she actually spoke really fast, um, forgetting to inject some emotions in in places or in words that needed to be highlighted. Um, but as Ms. Harriet mentioned, uh, the, the citing of laws, of regulations and other sources was really a good way for you to support your motion. On the opposition, opposition, opposition's side, um, it was really good that you addressed the government or your opposing team by pacing towards them and looking to, to them while you address them. It was really good. All right, the next round, um, From the government side, you were able to cite researches to support your motion, and you allowed point of um, information from your opposing team and from, from the opposition side. That was a very good chance for you to raise your information. However, it was not delivered very well. So, yeah. On the third round, um, I like the government's way of expressing their motion by giving personal experiences, using statistics, um, giving concrete examples of what you'd feel if you have a, if you have a professional looking after you, which would have could have had um, bad grades in the university days or college days. The weakness that I can see on the um, on this round was for the government side, a lot of pauses and breaks during the delivery of their argument. And lastly, on the last, um, on the whip, um, I like the government that the government cited the UNH uh, the U United Nations um, rights of the child convention that was awesome um, from the opposition's side you have given some examples but it would have been better if the examples were really concrete um, and not just in general, not just saying uh, in the last uh, in the last portion, not just saying stars or a list stars or a list celebrities and entrepreneurs. You could have um, cited someone or a list of people who are 
who you know and have done some, some background research on them and their um, educational background that would, have, do, that would have been really great. But overall, we have already um, given you really nice I'd really like to give you really good credits for your research, for the effort, and it's a job well done after all. Good job. Sure. Thank you so much, Teacher Ray, for your amazing outputs. I mean, um, comments and suggestions to all our um, amazing teams here. And now, whether we like it or not, we came up with the last part of and the most exciting part of our debate championship. Of course, we need to crown the winners or the team who won the hearts of not just our viewers, but also our educators. To be honest, guys, it's so hard to decide who will win for today's debate because, you know, as teacher Jonathan and I, we all love you guys and we wanted you to win. But again, we need to choose who will be the winner or the champions of today's debate. So now, to announce our winners. It's okay. To announce our winners, let's have... Or let's have, she's already on my back, Miss <laughs> Laura to announce. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. There's a twist as well. Today, we're going to announce, or Miss Laura will be announcing as well, the best speaker and the winning team. Okay, everybody. So, um, thank you so much. You're all doing an amazing job. Thank you for your efforts. Without further ado, I will announce the best speaker for today. That is Maria Sofia Gutierrez. The overall result for today, Woo! with 82.8 as their score, the winners Woo! are the Long opposition. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Laura, for your. And now we already crowned the winner of today's debate championship. It's none other than our opposition team. And also, we would like to congratulate our best speaker, Maria Sofia. And we do hope, guys, that you all, um, um, I mean, you were all very happy. It's the end and I'm stuttering. I hope you guys enjoyed our show for today and we're looking forward to more activities with our students and learners. And again, this has been Maggie, your host for today's debate. Kindly share, like, subscribe to all our social media.